Hey, welcome to the Acosta ETF channel. I'm your host, Lewis, and today we got a special video. Today's video is going to help you in setting up a Windows 10, brand new Windows 10 laptop, and how do you transfer your data from your old laptop to your new laptop. And it can be any laptop, right? You could be Windows 7, Windows 8, even as old as Windows XP. I hope you're not that outdated, but if you are, this video is just for you. All right, so before we get started, let's start with a little bit of housekeeping. First, make sure you like the video for the YouTube algorithm. You could either do it on your way in or on your way out. Second, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also as well share the video. Subscribing keeps you up to date with all the latest tech, engineering, finance videos that we do on this channel. Third thing, items that would be used in the video We'll have a link in the description in case you need them for yourself as well if you don't have them readily available. And lastly, if you find this video of value and it's really helped you out a lot, there's a link in the description where you can always say thank you. All right, so with housekeeping out of the way, let's get started. You're gonna need both laptops. Here's my old one. I have a Pavilion DM4 here. And then the new one, I have an HP Spectre 360 laptop. And then of course, uh, for laptops, you wanna make sure that you don't forget your charger. You have a USB 3.0 external hard drive. This hard drive has to be the same or greater size than the old laptop. You wanna make sure that you have enough space to fit all your data onto the hard drive. And then once that process is done, we can plug it in into the new laptop and complete that transfer. All right, so let's talk about setting up our Windows 10 machine. This is the page that I'm presented with as soon as I turn on my laptop. Now, in order to set up Windows 10, make sure you are connected to the internet, whether that is through Wi-Fi or through ethernet, we are gonna go through setting up Windows using a Microsoft account in order to be able to give us the full experience. So with that being said, let's take a look at the settings. So you can customize the settings that you would like by going under the customize settings button. Here you'll see all different type of options that are available. Now, in our case, I'm going to go back and hit the express settings option. With the express settings options, this will give us a default and it'll give me a Windows experience as Microsoft in intended it to be. So let's go ahead and click use express settings. Okay, so now we are in the screen where it says who owns this machine. I'll go ahead and click I own it. Uh, and I'm going to use a Microsoft account. Now keep in mind, um, in this video we we're going to use one, um, but if you don't have one, you can always click create one right over here and you'll be able to create your own Microsoft account. But for now I'm just going to use the one that I have. Okay, click next. Type in our password. So after you sign in using a Microsoft account, you can create a Windows Hello PIN, which is highly recommended. If your machine has uh, other biometric securities, you'll also be prompted to set those up as well. So that can mean anything from a fingerprint reader or a camera for facial recognition. So let's go ahead and set up a PIN. So Typically, I like my pins to be a little longer for security purposes, but for this video, we'll just make it short. In this case, I'm just going to save files to this PC by default. Uh, I, I'm choosing not to use OneDrive. Okay, so next, you have the ability to use Cortana or not. Cortana is an application that sits in Windows and it's your sidekick, which talks to you similar to a Siri on Apple. We'll go ahead and use it by default. And now we just give this a couple minutes to finish. All right, so now we're presented with the desktop. And just like that, 
you set up Windows 10. So here in front of us, we have my old Windows 7 laptop. Um, prior to starting the video, actually, I've taken the liberty to plug in the external hard drive that we talked about earlier that you're going to need. So if you haven't done that at this point, go ahead and plug that in. So once you plug that in, we're going to take a look at you know, our hard drive space just to make sure that we're okay and we won't, won't run into any issues. So we do that by going into our start menu, then going to computer. And once we're in computer, we can see now that there's two drives here. Our C drive, which is our main hard drive, which is what holds the operating system, our documents, and all of our applications that make this computer do something useful. Uh, so we can right click on that and go to properties and we'll bring this off to the side over here. And then the E drive is the external hard drive that I plugged in uh, in order to house the data that we had previously. Um, so we're gonna right click that as well and go to properties and bring that off to the side. So here's a side by side comparison of our hard drive which holds all of our documents, uh, the operating system and our programs which is the C drive. And you can see here that there's 238 gigabytes total, of which that I've used 21.5. And then the external hard drive I have here is 465 gigabytes, uh, and there's practically nothing on there, right? Uh, just enough data to format the drive, um, which allows the computer to understand uh, how to save the uh, data that I'm gonna put on there. So remember, as we talked about before, the hard drive needs to be equal or double in size and the hard drive I'm, I'm referring to is the external hard drive so once you have validated that you are good to go in order to start uh, transferring your data let's start working on transferring that data so in Windows um, you typically have user profiles and user profiles is what holds all the data um, normally for users unless if you have more advanced users that put items in different places on the hard drive. But for most users, typically all documents are stored within their user profile. And in this case, right, my user profile is under the name of owner. And we can go ahead and find that by going into the start menu and clicking computer. Let's go over to the C drive. And then under users, you will see all the profiles associated with this computer. Yours might be different, so be on the lookout for your name. And so as we noticed, as before, right, owner was mine. So here is our owner profile. And when we go in here, we can see that there's many different folders, and these folders make up all the items that are on our computer, from your documents to your pictures to things on your desktop. So as you notice, right, in my desktop, I have a couple of different photos here from a cruise that we took back a couple years ago. And we could find that under our de desktop directory. So I'm gonna go in there and you can see all of my pictures. So when I'm going to back up my computer and I transfer over these folders, I'm actually grabbing all the items that I need. So let's head back up to our users directory. And this is actually the um, directory that I wanna copy over into my external hard drive. So I do that by right clicking owner, go to copy. And then now we're gonna head back to the computer and we're gonna go into our external hard drive and we're gonna paste that in there. And we'll give this a couple minutes to complete. As we're getting near completion, you might be presented with a pop-up like such. that says that there's a file in use. Now, in the Windows operating systems, there are some files that are stored in your profile uh, that are used in order to uh, run the operating system. Now, this particular file or the particular files if found, uh, they're not necessary in order to transfer over your data. So you're more concerned about your documents, your pictures. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna click on do this for all current uh, items, which is found five. We're just gonna skip that uh, as it's not necessary. So now that we've transferred over our profile to our external hard drive, now we're ready to transfer it over to our Windows 10 machine, our new one. And I'm gonna show you how to get that started.
we are on the desktop of my Windows 10 machine. Now we're ready to start transferring over that data. So first thing we're going to do is going to uh, File Explorer. So right on the taskbar, we're going to click on our File Explorer. Once we click on our File Explorer, we're going to click on this PC. And you can see here we have our C drive and we also have our F drive. So C drive, as we talked about before, is the main drive for Windows, right? It holds the operating system, the data, and the applications that make up a computer. And then F drive was is the drive that we plugged in our external hard drive. So let's go over to our C drive. And same process as before in Windows 7, right? Windows 10, very similar. We go under users. And here we want to be very careful, right? We want to make sure we pick the right profile. So in my case, we go to start and we see what our profile is, which is Lewis Win 10. So we're going to come in here and we see that we have the same exact data that we copied over from last time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up another file explorer, right clicking and click file explorer. So let's go under this PC again go to our F drive and here is the file that we copied over from our Windows 7 machine. So what we're going to have to do in this case, it's very important that we follow this exact to the T is we're going to actually copy and replace all of the directories that we uh, copied over to the hard drive. So these ones in particular, our video, our search, so on and so forth. So we're going to go into our owner profile and here are the directories that we copied, right? So let's highlight all of them. And we're going to right click and we're going to click on copy. And then we're going to come in here into our Windows 10 machine, right? And we're going to right click the white space and we're going to hit paste. And once we do that, it's actually going to start copying over all the files, right? And it's going to put them on our machine. And since we are copying all the files, we want to make sure that we replace any of the files in the current destination. And this assumes that we are replacing the files that already live on the machine and we're okay with doing that. Meaning this is a brand new machine that we're setting up. We're replacing known files that we want to replace. So make sure that you are not erasing any files in particular uh, and if you are unsure of that, you can always click let me decide for each file. But let's click on this one to make sure that we go through that process if you're unsure. So this shows you a list of all the files that we're looking to replace. So a desktop link, uh, a remote desktop. We have another link here and looks like we have some searches here. So I am going to choose the files that live on the owner side and I'll just go ahead and replace that. So I'll just hit continue and we are done. So if I close out of this and close out of this, you'll notice that my desktop now looks exactly like the Windows 7 desktop, right? So I have my pictures here, right? So let's open one of them up. And we can see the pictures that were on my Windows 7 machine. Okay, so the next step in the process is to install any applications that might have existed in your old machine. So in our case, the Windows 7 machine onto the new machine, which is our Windows 10. The software we're going to install is called LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a free alternative to Microsoft Office. So File Explorer, we'll go into our downloads and here we have LibreOffice. So I'm just basically going to right click on that and click install. And it basically will walk you through the setup of LibreOffice. So we'll just hit next on these items and let's not change any of the typical uh, setup types. So let's just click next on that. We're going to create a shortcut on our desktop and we're just going to give this a couple minutes in order to install and click yes on the user account control. Let's go ahead and click finish. Alrighty. 
So now we can launch our applications to make sure it works. So in this case, let's launch LibreOffice. Okay, and here we're presented with the home screen. So let's say I wanna write a document. So I'll go into our writer document. All right, click OK, and let's maximize this. And it seems like we're, uh, you know, we have a document here that we can start typing away, and we're all set to go. All right, so by now, everyone should have an understanding of how to set up your new Windows 10 laptop, transfer your data from the old laptop to the new one, and install any applications you may need in order to get your computer up and running to do something useful. If you have any questions or if you have any comments on new videos you'd like to see, sound off in the comments below. Also as well, don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, we're gonna be posting a lot of content on all things engineering, technology, and finance. See you on the next one.